you know, the key properties are you need to have a Cartesian coordinate system that you define. It can be defined either by, um, uh, by the frame itself. So if you drop a Lexel frame on the head, it already has, you can look at the bottom and you can count out that it has, you know, 200 millimeters on each side of that, of that sort of box that's being put on the head. Uh, it also is present now, every CT and MRI that is obtained has its own, they are volumetric scans, so they each point uh, it has its own XYZ coordinate. So on some software, if you go down to your MRI or CT, you'll see that when you move the mouse around the scan, it will give you an XYZ coordinate somewhere in the upper corner. Uh, and those can be co-opted. So for the, for example, the, uh, the Starfix frame that I use essentially uses the XYZ coordinate of the CT scan to define where things are in space. And it simply just makes a transform that says, okay, if you want to be at a particular um, um, ACPC coordinate in the brain, there's a way of mapping the brain based on structures within the brain. We know that through the simple transform, you add X amount to the X, you add a certain amount to the Y, you subtract a certain amount to Z, and then you, you find the same location. Um, two concepts that are important, but sometimes are at odds with each other. So there, there is accuracy and there is precision. And so, you know, ideally what you want is, the, 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 is both, is to have accuracy and precision where you're sort of always hitting the center of the bullseye. Uh, you can have something that is accurate, but imprecise, which means on average, you get to the center of the bullseye, but you, you may have a lot of scatter. There's imprecision in the way that you deliver that. Uh, you can have precision without accuracy. You're always right, but your frame is bent. You know, you're always in the same spot, more or less, but your frame is bent. So you're always, you know, four millimeters to the left or some such thing. And then the, the worst is to have the sort of scatter shot of being imprecise and, and, and inaccurate. Um, and here's what I talked about, sort of frame space versus, uh, you know, MRI and CT space. Um, one element that is important is how do you register so you have a scan and you know the xyz coordinates of that scan you then have to register that to the actual head of the patient that can be done rigidly by a frame that is clamped on the head uh, or it can be done um, uh, you know using sort of lasers and, and things like that uh, which uh, which are you know uh, sometimes less precise because this the the face is is mobile um, but, but you make up for that by having quite a lot of points of registration. Um, so for any of you who have an iPhone, face recognition is essentially that same process. It shines uh, beams, I think, of infrared light onto the face, and then it picks up all of those, uh, the, the, the distribution of those points, and it, it can essentially do a registration. It knows your face. It checks to see whether the face it's seeing is the same. And so, uh, um, so, so, you know, some of these things have now entered, you know, we, we have sort of more technology in our iPhones than we have in a lot of our ORs, which is, which is impressive. Um, so here are traditional frames. We sort of showed some of these pictures, robotic frames. Here's the Rosa. Image guided platforms, the next frame. And the customized platforms, which are what I use primarily. And these are both versions that are made by FHC. Um, uh, to perform sort of more rapid and more comfortable stereotaxis because the patient can move with that frame on the head. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.